What's up guys, Chicks there from Chicks Tech Reviews. So this just arrived last night and I'm already working on it. So I finally got my hands on the Chromecast with Google TV. So without wasting any further time, let's get this box open, shall we? So first of all, we have the actual Chromecast device in all white with a single button on the back and an HDMI cable sticking out. Now, I'm just gonna put it to the side and see what else we get. So this little box here is for the remote and already I'm thinking the remote's gonna be small. Wow, the remote control is tiny, but it fits nicely in the hands. You've got a whole bunch of buttons for navigational, Google Assistant button, so there is a built-in microphone. You have shortcuts for home, YouTube, Netflix, power button, and inputs. And on the side, there is a volume rocker. And this remote is powered by two AAA batteries. So let's see what else we get. Instruction manuals, put it to the side. We have our power. So USB Type-C to USB-A cable. And if I can get it out of the box, a power brick. And the voltage is five volts. 1.5a and hidden at the bottom of the box you will find two AAA batteries. Now the Chromecast unit follows the same design as the previous Chromecasts and I will bring in the Chromecast Ultra to compare and as you can see the new Chromecast is slightly bigger and more oval in shape than the round Chromecast Ultra. Also the Chromecast Ultra used micro USB for power and the new Chromecast with Google TV uses USB Type-C for power. Now there is no information on the specs from the actual Google store so I had to do a bit of research to find out the specs. So we have an Amlogic CPU, it's the S905D3, it's a quad core clocked at 1.9 GHz. Now it is supported by the Mali G31 with 2 gigs of RAM and 4 gigs of internal storage. That's right people, you're only getting 4 gigs of internal storage. Now you've got dual band Wi-Fi AC with Bluetooth 4.1. This is running Google Android TV OS version 10, supports 4K HDR at 60 frames per second. Now this does support the very best streaming quality, Dolby Vision with HDR10 and HDR10 Plus, and the very best audio with Dolby Atmos and support for 5.1 surround sound. And the actual remote control included is a hybrid, it's a Bluetooth remote control, but it's also got infrared at the front so it can control your television functions. And to figure out the specs, I actually had to install a few apps on the Chromecast, open them up, and that gave me the system information. So yeah, this is a different product. Um, Google hasn't given the specs on purpose because I think that would put a lot of people off. But at this stage, I'm gonna reserve all judgment because this is a completely different product. This is not your typical Fire TV stick. This is not your typical Android TV box. This is something different. So I'm gonna bear that in mind when I'm evaluating this. Now let's quickly talk about pricing as I do need to clear a few things up as it's not going to be obvious for everyone. So it's $59.99 for the brand new Chromecast with Google TV or $89.99 with six months of Netflix. Now the special offer with Netflix is available for new and existing customers. Now if you're an existing customer like me, I'm paying $11.99 a month for Ultra HD Netflix package. So I picked up the $89.99 special offer and when logging into the Chromecast during setup, and I was emailed a credit of 53 pounds and 94 pence. So that would basically cover me for four and a half months of Netflix on the Ultra HD package. If I was on the standard HD package, then yes, it would cover me for six months. And if I was on the cheapest basic 599 package, mm -hmm then it would cover me for nine months of Netflix. But here's the thing, who would buy a 4K Chromecast with Google TV to watch standard HD Netflix? So basically I paid in advance four and a half months worth of Netflix, which I would have paid anyway. So deduct £53.94 from the 89.99 equals 36 pounds and five pence. So basically this Chromecast with Google TV has cost me 36 pounds. So in other words, if you're already paying for a Netflix subscription, this Google TV unit will feel like a bargain at only 36 pounds. 
if you have not got Netflix, then that means the credit of £53.94 will give you either nine months of Netflix on the basic package, six months of Netflix on the HD package, or four and a half months of Netflix on the Ultra HD package. Now, I hope this clears up the pricing and the special offer. I think the special offer is definitely the way to go. It's worth the money if you intend to watch Netflix rather than paying £59.99 up front just for the unit on its own. So without any further ado, let's go ahead, get this all set up and find out exactly how good it really is. I'll be right back. So the Chromecast just plugs directly into your TV's HDMI port and then you plug in the USB-C power cable. If you connect the Chromecast to an HDMI CEC port on your TV, the remote control will automatically control your TV functions like volume and power. So really easy to set up, just open Google Home on your smartphone and tap on connect a Chromecast and follow the easy instructions on your phone. And yes, you will need a Google account to proceed. And as soon as setup was complete, it automatically ran a system update. So first of all, I ran a boot up speed test and this device took 51 seconds to fully load the home screen from a cold start. Now this is Google's Android TV OS version 10, but slightly different to what we see on the Shield TV for example. So you have a menu on top with your home page which is called For You, then you've got Movies, Shows, Apps, Library and your avatar on the far right with the system settings. Now the home page has lots of recommendations. The second row of icons are your apps and then you have your top picks and what to watch next with a good mix of TV shows and movies from Netflix, Prime, Google, etc. So a full page of recommendations and I believe these recommendations will adapt and change based on what you are watching. Now when you get right to the bottom, you can customize these recommendations by switching off any sources that you don't want or get recommendations from. But first impressions, nothing feels slow. Everything feels actually pretty fast. Um, I'm not getting that feeling that there's only two gigs of RAM, but we're only gonna know when we start opening apps. So first of all, we're gonna test out some YouTube streaming, and that's a good opportunity to test out the voice search function. 4K video. And you can stream a maximum of 4K at 60 frames per second with HDR on YouTube. Now Netflix supports the very best video and audio streaming quality, as you can see Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos supported, but of course your TV has to support Vision and Atmos and your Netflix sub has to be the 4K Ultra HD package. And Amazon Prime Video also supports Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos Sound. Hello, Chief Judge. Joining us, President Andrew. Members of Congress and Cabinet officers have all been placed under a 21-day quarantine. Now, Disney Plus supports 4K at 60 frames per second with HDR10 and a maximum of 5.1 surround sound. So I know for a fact that all the Star Wars movies are available in Dolby Vision and Atmos. And as you can see, we are not getting that option. Aladdin is also another movie which I know supports Vision and Atmos. But unfortunately, Dolby Vision and Atmos is not available on Disney through this new Chromecast device. If you try and open these same movies on Disney with your Nvidia Shield TV, you will see the Dolby Vision and Atmos symbols pop up. Now remember, just because you have a 4K TV, it does not automatically mean you will get Dolby Vision and Atmos. The TV needs to have native support for it. 
For example, the LG Super Ultra HD TVs have native support, which is what you're seeing in front of you. And I have tested this new Chromecast device on a cheaper 4K TV, which claims Atmos and Dolby Vision, but does not give you that full support. So as long as you connect this device to a fully capable television, you will get 4K60, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos and HDR10+. Now this is not a gaming device and it's not being sold as one either, but the Mali G31 is actually powerful enough to play games like PUBG. So it's definitely worth testing out the gaming performance. But unfortunately when I tried to install Asphalt 8, I got a message that there is not enough space left to install the game. So instead, I tested Crossy Roads and let me tell you right now, it was one of the smoothest Crossy Roads experience I've ever had on a TV box. It just looked and played really smooth. Download Stadia. Here's Stadia on the Google Play Store. Now Google Stadia is not available on this device and it's a real shame as that would have definitely added some real value to this project. But fortunately other game streaming options are available such as GE Force Now, Steam Link and even a third party PS4 remote play app. Now let's test each one out and see how they perform beginning with GeForce Now playing Counter-Strike and I did have to connect a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse so I could actually log in and I was playing the game with the same keyboard. So next up, a quick test of PS Play, and we will see how well PlayStation 4 Remote Play works on this system. So I did manage to connect successfully, but unfortunately the game just lagged and lagged to the point where I would call this unplayable. Finally, my favorite from the bunch, Steam Link, and my Lenovo Legion laptop is actually connected via Ethernet for a more stable Steam Link connection. So I guess it's time for some GTA 5 on the Chromecast with Google TV. And as you guys can see, the game is playing very nice and smooth with no frame drops or lag. Now the real question is, can you sideload your favorite APKs? Well, by default, no you can't. It's actually set so you can't install your own apps. But there is a way around this. If you're already familiar with Sectors Play, install it as usual from the Play Store. You won't be able to enable all the permissions yet, but don't worry, go to Main Settings, go to About, scroll down to the bottom and keep selecting Android TV OS Build until you unlock Developer Mode. Now you can go ahead and open Sectors Play, enable all the permissions and then you can use the app as normal. So you can go ahead and install all your favorite APKs. Thank me later. Now let's check out some system information and benchmarks. So you can see we have a quad core CPU clocked at 1.91 gigahertz and it's running the Mali G31. And also this device is running Android 10 and does not come rooted as standard. And here are the results of the internal disk speed tests we achieved read speeds of 121 and write speeds of 43. 
For benchmarks, I tested the latest version of Geekbench and Antutu and they just didn't work. They would crash just when it gets to 100%. So this is Antutu version 6, which does work. And although it's not going to be as accurate as the latest one, the final result we achieved was 36K. So let's see how that compares with the others. So here is the top performing Android TV box chart of 2020. All the devices are ranked based on their benchmark performance. So as you can see, the Chromecast with Google TV has taken position 36 with a benchmark score of 36K. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was the Chromecast with Google TV. Now, this is a unique product. It's a full Android TV OS experience, similar to the Nvidia Shield TV, but in a very small form factor. Now, no way am I saying this is more powerful than the Nvidia Shield TV. I'm only saying that the OS is similar. Now, this device has been designed for streaming 4K, and it does that extremely well. 4K, HDR10, and Dolby Vision will absolutely blow your mind. The visuals look stunning and amazing sound to go with it. It supports both Atmos and 5.1 surround. Now, even with the low RAM, the performance was very good. Navigating menus, opening and closing apps, watching and streaming 4K online, everything is smooth as butter and fast in operation. I did not experience any lag or slowdown. Now, I know I did a lot of gaming tests, and this is not a gaming device. It's not designed for gaming. I only did that for my own entertainment as I like to push the device a bit to see how it handles. Now this is predominantly a 4K streaming device. It supports all the major streaming apps and it's got all the 4K and Dolby licensing that's required. Now on my chart, it was ranked low due to the performance score, but I personally rated this 4.5 out of five. Bottom line, Go for the Netflix offer and get this unit for £36. It's a bargain at that price. Now, you will definitely prefer this over any built-in television UI. Now, a few things to consider is no expansion for storage or ports, RAM and storage on the low side, and it does not support Google Stadia. And yes, I did try to sideload Stadia. I even got the app to open and I even got to sign in. But as soon as it signed in, it just crashed. So Google Stadia is not gonna work on it, even if you sideload it. Now again, I rate this product 4.5 out of five. It's worth the money, especially at 36 pounds. And if you buy this for the full price of 59 pounds, I would then compare my options against the Fire TV Stick 4K, which has better specs and performance than this device. But at the end of the day, I know some of you prefer having Android TV OS when compared to Fire OS. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. What do you guys prefer, Fire TV OS or Android TV OS? And also let me know specifically what you think about the new Chromecast with Google TV. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a brilliant day. I'll see you guys in the next one.